What is going on, guys? Uh, Tony from Team Divine Pro here, uh, coming at you with a card fight Vanguard video today. So, uh, most likely gonna be a deck profile since uh, I can't. But uh, I will be switching it up late soon, and I will come back to you guys with more Waste Wars and uh, more Cardfight Vanguard and uh, some more stuff for sale. Now, you might, guys might be wondering why I'm selling so much, but it's it's not like I'm quitting or anything. I'm just starting to sell things because, uh, you know, there are other things in life. So uh, let's get on to the deck profile. So this is uh, my teammates, one of my teammates' uh, decks. He is playing uh, Pale Moon. It's actually quite a really good deck. Uh, don't really know how he does it, but it's a really good deck. And it, you might wonder it's a little odd, but it's still really good. And uh, we call this the Alice Switch Up deck. So here is the deck. So starter is a girl who crossed the gap. I'm gonna put her aside. And then for grade threes, we have three Sarah. So there's just a proxy a Midnight Invader. Although he does think about, he is thinking about keeping this in just because but that as it would stand it's four Sarah uh, three out Al uh, four Alice so eight grade threes and this Alice I don't know if I can get it on the camera no I can't but it is an SP yeah you can kind of see it it is an SP Alice so uh, maybe for that stacking <laughs> funny so yeah eight grade threes one SP Alice because Alice is pretty awesome, and that's the main key card of the deck. So, and then for grade twos, you have 10, which is a little odd to me. I would rather play 11, but you have four Cerberus, because the deck does have a lot of low beaters, and you do need those high beaters at times, and you'll see why. Uh, you have two uh, Dancing Princess in the Night Sky, which can, in reality, soul charge pretty much anything in the deck apart from Alice which would be too broken if it actually was and then you can get it back with this card so that and uh, purple trapezist it's actually really good and midnight bunny which he runs as well then we play two near demon this is the one card I'd opt to put an extra one of if you were to make it into 11 11 uh, grade twos yeah 11 grade twos and the last grade two he plays is two big league bear so his rationality behind this is that he wants to get lots of stuff in the soul quickly so you can have more of a toolbox effect with the uh sarah's and with the switchers like such as girl who crossed the gap or anything because in all reality this gives you two cards and like even though you do soul charge like a, a trigger or so the triggers you can always call them back and then like at least and they have some of the triggers that he runs plays do play effects so they do come in handy so in reality this card doesn't really deal a minus i would just suggest playing either one more mirror demon or one more of her if you were to play 11. so that is 10 and then that would mean that there's 15 grade ones so grade one lineup is four bark uh dark metal bicorn two midnight bunny good switcher uh one two skull juggler it's a good first turn it's just pretty much just like uh the Big League Bear, whereas you get to Soul Charge and you just want to get more cards into the Soul, although it's okay as a card. It's 7k. 7k is like mainly the one reason why, because the deck, if you don't play uh, Purple Trapezes, I mean Turquoise Beast Hammer and all that, it is more of a struggle to get those high numbers, so you play that. And then you play 3 Purple Trapezes, one of the best cards of the deck, just like uh, her and all that, you get to switch out and you get to make these really good players with Alice that you get to put her in. Like, say you have, like, a field like that. You attack, and you call her out, and she's already attacked. You just put her in, and then you put something you put something else, and then you call her. I don't really know how the players work, but it just, it makes this plus Alice is pretty much another attack, like four or five attacks, which is really good. And then the final grade one are the three perfect guards. He opts to play only three rather than... Uh, this is a proxy by the way and instead of four just because he would he prefers it that way and the deck seems to work really well he actually is able to beat a lot of like the meta decks which is just goes to prove how good Pale Moon is but that also has something to reason to do with uh, his trigger lineup but if you were to take anything out to make that 11th grade 2 I would suggest 
probably either opting to take out uh, one skull juggler or one purple and pieces. I know I said it's really good, but the six K boot, the six K power is kind of a deficit. But in general, I don't think you would need to really change it because the deck does have enough grade twos as it is, and most of the times you rather you have these as your uh, call cards because you can switch out with like a uh, purple trapezes which is a good toolbox for the deck and now finally for the grade zeros the trigger lineup we play four heal and six crit and then this is where it comes different uh six stand so the reasoning behind the six stand is that you can ideally become being like a sarah switch up deck ideally you want to have your alice's or your well pretty much the the ideal field although you never get it you probably rarely ever get it is having alice as such and then being boosted by i don't know uh this field comes up actually this field comes up quite a bit so you'd probably want your vanguard here and then you'd want a purple trapezist in the soul and then you'd want i don't know just like random 8k boosters or something so the goal of the deck is to attack first with this and then your opponent will obviously guard that so then you attack with this one and then so you don't drive check anything but you do get a stand trigger you get to stand and the attack has gone through you get to stand and then counter blast one enter the soul call this enter uh her in the soul and then you get to call something else out so it does make apply more pressure and usually by the time this has occurred you have uh, another alice in soul so you can just switch her this alice for another one and then you get another 18k column which allows you for another switch and then usually by then you've given the power here or to that one so it makes a 23k column which even crossrides have difficulties guarding and like even just having one is really good because you can still switch it with purple trapezes and get the other alice out so no matter what this deck is focused around getting Alice out and uh, applying lots of pressure, which is a huge issue, even against cross rides, because I've tested against this deck and it is quite a menace, even for a Dragonic Overlord at the end. So, anyways, guys, uh, this has been the Alice Switch Up deck, uh, Pale Moon. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for more content coming at you with uh, Cardfight Vanguard and Wish Wars. Uh, this has been Tony from Team Divine Pro signing off.